Hi, Homeworthy. Welcome to my California apartment on the water. Hi, I'm Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and we're now offering a membership plan that gives our supporters early and exclusive access to new videos. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Roz. You're here at my home in Los Angeles? Come on in, I can't wait to show you around. With this membership, we invite you to open more doors, discovering new homes, rooms, and personalities available only to those with the keys to our guest house. You'll be part of a community of people who are just as passionate as you are about interior design. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. I'm Sarah Horton, and we are inside my Newport Beach studio apartment. So this apartment is roughly 425 square feet. Um, it's, I feel like there's been some debate on social media about what to call this. Is between a studio and I would say a junior one bedroom, there is not really a ton of separation between the living room kitchen area and the bedroom. Um, and that kind of flows out into, onto my deck which I think adds a lot of square footage, but that's exterior. I actually was living in LA for about 10 years in Venice Beach, another beach community just north up the road. And it was 2020, I wanted to, I wanted to change, I wanted to relocate. And I was actually looking to move to Laguna Beach. And this place kind of came up unexpectedly. I had a friend whose older brother had been living here for, I think four or five years. And he wanted to move to Costa Rica. Everybody was changing their lives. <laughs> and so I got the opportunity to take a look at this place and I thought it just had such amazing bones. I immediately fell in love with the ceilings. They had so much character and the outdoor space is amazing. It just kind of worked out this kind of kismet -y, lucky thing. So before I moved in, this place was definitely a kind of bachelor pad boy surfer shack haven. There were a lot of ropes strung up on the ceiling and there were surfboards um, in between the beams. And I don't want to take anything away from it. It was a great spot, but I definitely had um, a little something different in mind when I took a look. But again, it had great bones, so I was really excited. Welcome to the main living space. This is kind of the living room, kitchen, kind of hybrid room. And I'm gonna take you around and show you some of my favorite things. This pendant light is an antique or vintage, not exactly sure, um, but I love these. It's a French empire style crystal pendant light. I actually picked this one up from a consignment shop in Newport Beach. It's no longer there, but I, love it and I feel like it really started transforming this space into feeling a little bit more sophisticated when I first moved here. So anyway, I love this. I feel like it really anchors the room. And then we're gonna go from the living room <laughs> over to the kitchen. This is my little kind of galley kitchen setup. I recently did uh, a little renter friendly DIY backsplash to kind of warm it up in here. Give me that Nancy Myers kitchen that I'm always aspiring to. Um, it was super easy and I think really kind of elevated this part of the house because this was sort of a side that I didn't, I didn't really love to show all that much. And I added like a little shelf up there with some of my favorite things. I've got um, a Turkish olive jar. I love that little mushroom print. And then this is from my aunt's store in North Carolina. It's a really cool kind of like tin, like bowl vessel thing. 
Okay, and then this, we're gonna go over here, <laughs> is one of my favorite pieces. This Pine Hutch is a Facebook Marketplace find. Um, I believe it's French, or at least it's French inspired. I don't really know where all these things come from, but I used to have a desk here when I first moved and I never really ended up sitting there. It just kind of ended up being dead space. Um, so I was super excited when I found this on Facebook Marketplace. It had actually been at a paint store. You can still kind of see some of the little um, paint splashes. I did my best to kind of scrape them off, but this was housing like little liters of paint, which was crazy to me. <laughs> um, but anyway, I, I got it on Facebook Marketplace. It was like $250, which is crazy. These go for thousands. I bought it sight unseen and I just had movers go pick it up and bring it here. It barely fit through the door. I'm very, very lucky and blessed that it did. But I just absolutely love this piece. I feel like it has such an old world feel and I, it provides me so much storage as well. Living in a small space, having a desk here was great, but having this that doubles as, you know, China cabinet space and also I have a lot of lower storage down here. And then I'm also really big into art and this piece in particular is really special to me. My grandmother gave it to me and she actually passed a little, little less than two years ago. So I love that I have it. It makes me think of her and I'm really inspired by a lot of my family members and their homes and having something from her home in here just is really special. Um, and then I also love this one as well. This is from a California artist, Sandy Austro. But anyway, I love this one because I feel like it reminds me of a girl at the beach and you know, that's me, a girl at the beach. <laughs> so I store a lot of different things. I have extra towels down here, beach towels and bath towels because we're at the beach. And then I have extra kitchen stuff. And then you guys, these are my drunk drawers. This is like anything goes in here. I'm not gonna open it for you, but it's a little crazy in there, but comes in handy. I usually keep my plates up here, but they're actually outside on the deck set for dinner. So you'll see them in a little bit. So when people ask me to describe my style, how I've decorated this place, I tend to call it sort of traditional, coastal, maximalist with sort of pops of French country and a little bit of unexpected contemporary thrown in there, which I know is kind of a mouthful, but I guess the, the overarching theme is this home is very personal. It's very collected. It's things that I love that are kind of from a variety of different styles that I've sort of pulled together um, in a way that I think looks very calming and very relaxed, um, but sophisticated at the same time. I definitely get compared to Nancy Myers quite a bit on social media, and she has been a huge influence of mine. I love all of her interiors and all of her films, and I love that they feel really lived in and they reflect the characters that are living in that place. And I feel like it just tells you more about the person. And I feel like that's kind of what I've tried to do here too. Okay, now let's go check out the bar cart area. So I love this area of the house because I feel like this is very quintessential beach house. And I feel like here, I was very inspired by kind of Caribbean, India Hicks, that kind of collected like old world, even Florida, like Palm Beach-esque vibe. It's a lot of different vibes there. Um, but I I don't remember where I originally saw this, but I love shape of this like cane bamboo mirror and then having the sea fans up at the top. I feel like I've seen other designers do that or in coffee table books. I can't even remember where I saw it, but I just feel like that really brings in the element of like organic beach living. These are not from here though. I picked these up in Tulum um, and brought them back, packed them flat in my suitcase. I can't remember, I think these, that one bowl I got at the flea market, the, the woven bowl, and then these uh, art pieces. This one is from the Mart Collective in Venice, which is like a cool kind of permanent flea market. And then the rest of these are just Etsy printouts. And then this bar cart is, I feel like it gets a lot of attention. And I also am a big thrifter flea market person. So uh, these silver 
coupe glasses are thrifted. This vessel is thrifted. I brought in this uh, sort of ceramic-y uh, clamshell too to sort of bring in that beachy vibe. So this is kind of, this to me is the quintessential beach house area of the house. So the overall vibe of this place is very kind of cozy, coastal, maximalist. I love to use different textures in here and especially because it's so light and bright and white in here, I really wanted to use a lot of lighter tones to kind of amplify that feeling but I like to use a lot of different textures um, and different prints even, like this rug kind of is plays off of that. Um, these chairs have little linen slip covers on them. I had them made. I just wanted something kind of organic feeling and I love the shape of these tiny chairs. These chairs underneath are from Home Goods and they're leopard print under. <laughs> um, but I got this really nice kind of like linen blend fabric and took it to um, an upholsterer and had them do a French seam. Um, and I love how these look. They're so perfectly sized for the space. And then I've got this oversized cozy couch that's in the same fabric. But overall, it's just comfortable and cozy. And it has a sophistication to it, I think, with the lighting. But overall, it's really relaxed. I am a full-time content creator. I create a lot of different content here in my apartment for different brands. Prior to that, um, I worked in brand marketing for a really long time and I dealt with a lot of the visual look of, of the brand. So I would you know, work on the photo shoots, social media, et cetera. So I kind of have brought that whole experience into what I do now. Okay, so this is my like little maximalist treasure trove. I have more sea fans up top and then a ton of books and then a lot of personal things in here. I have photos of family. This is my mom and my great grandmother and my grandfather and my uncle Tom <laughs> um, at the beach on a boat, which is perfect for here. Um, and then a lot of these things are things I've picked up or collected. A lot of the coral I've picked up myself. Um, and then I really love this boat painting. I got this um, at this place called The Barn in San Juan Capistrano. So I got it locally and I just thought it was so beautiful. It had a horrible frame, but I popped it out and now it's just this really nice like beaded board that sits in the back and I feel like it fits here perfectly with being out on the harbor. And I have one more thing I wanted to tell you about this. Um, we're all about high-low in this house. So this bookcase is actually Ikea. I wanted to find something and source something vintage, but I just haven't come across anything. But I actually really love this and it just works. The shelves are adjustable and I feel like it's created this really nice little nook that kind of hides this part of the kitchen. And it's really nice that you can kind of have new, old, you know, high-end, low-end, all kind of co coexisting in one space. I don't really have an entryway, but I did kind of make this little gallery wall moment here. And this is another sort of high-low um, feature. So these two, I think, were originally from Restoration Hardware, but I ended up thrifting them. This is a Goodwill <laughs> little purchase. I honestly can't remember where I got that, but then these I took from my mom and I think they're actually nice. Sorry, mom. The best thing about living by the beach is being in such close proximity to nature and such close proximity to the water. I find nature in general to be so grounding and being able to walk just a few blocks and you're just surrounded by gorgeous sand and water. It's really just so calming and relaxing and it's part of the lifestyle that I really love being down here. Okay, so now you've seen the main living space. Let's go check out the bedroom, which is right here. Okay, so the inspiration for my bedroom is still definitely coastal, cozy, traditional. Um, but we went a little bit less maximalist in here just to make sure it was nice and calm. Um, all white bedding kind of mixed with like a little bit of an oatmeal. I brought in um, the natural rattan sconces. And then I have another one of these um, vintage French Empire crystal pendant lights. This one's more of a sphere shape. 
Um, and you can tell they're vintage because the tops are actually still mercury glass. I love this painting above my bed. This was actually 30th birthday present from my parents. And I love that it's kind of an unexpected moment in here because everything is so traditional and this kind of brings in a little bit of contemporary and I think it still really kind of reflects the outside which is very beachy but I love that piece and it's very special to me. One of the best features of this bedroom is it goes right out to the patio. In the summer I usually have these doors open all the time and when it gets hot they're, I'll even sleep with them open sometimes just for like a nice cross breeze but um, it really is amazing having such quick access to outside and I feel like it enlarges this space so much and makes it feel so much bigger than 425 square feet. I have a lot of white linen curtains here and especially in the bedroom, I have them covering the door that goes outside. I also have them covering the closet. I feel like it's a great renter hack to hang curtains really high. It sort of draws your eye up and it makes them look custom. And I think it gives it a really kind of cozy, sophisticated look. Okay, speaking of white linen, the white linen continues on the bedding. I'm a big layer person, so this has a lot of layers. But another thing that makes this bed look so fluffy is it's on 18 inch risers because underneath is where I hide everything I don't want you guys to see. <laughs> but mostly it's just extra clothes and things I don't use all the time, suitcases, etc. But that is also a great renter hack is get a high bed and it's better storage underneath. So this little vignette moment is new. I got these um, vintage botanical plates framed um, and they're custom framed to look antique. It's Italian beaded frames. And then to finish that off, um, I got some sconces from a consignment shop and then I actually made these just like with a glue gun. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's taffeta fabric that I got from a discount designer fabric warehouse, but they're sort of meant to look kind of organic to kind of offset how traditional the rest of this is, but this is a new addition and I love it. It kind of plays into the maximalist aesthetic that I have in here, but it's still kind of clean and calm and relaxing. Another piece that everybody asks about are these dressers. Unfortunately, they are discontinued, but another elevated Ikea find. I'm telling you, high and low can coexist and look amazing. This mirror is a French antique and this is Ikea and it all kind of blends together in this really awesome way and looks super elevated. I feel like because this place has such amazing natural light, having everything bright and white really works in this space. I think sometimes people assume white makes everything look bigger, which I feel like if you do have a darker room that's really cramped, I think that that is a good time to use color. But in this case, this is an upper unit. There's windows all the way around. So the light in here is really amazing. and. I feel like the white just kind of brightens everything up and I think it does make it look larger. Okay, now you've seen the bedroom, so let's check out the bathroom and this is kind of a work in progress so you get a little peek behind the curtain of my process. So currently this is all white but I am swatching some colors. These are a few that I'm looking at, and I'm also looking to create a shower curtain in a fabric, and also possibly a sink skirt. I'm looking at a few different ones, but this one is kind of calling my name because my great-grandmother actually had this pattern in like her little sitting room off of her bedroom. It's called Hollyhock, which I love. But I did sort of a halfway reno and then quit last year, but I did pick up these sconces, which are vintage, at a consignment store, and I found this mirror that I don't think is vintage. I think it's a replica, but I really liked it, and I gotta be honest, the price was right, so she was coming home. I'm trying out these swatches kind of in different areas and looking to see at different times of day kind of what it looks like. And then this is sort of my bathroom storage cabinet. It's a pine antique as well, a little Long Beach flea market find, so more to come. As a joke, I um, did a little uh, kind of TikTok, and I also put it on Instagram, um, Nancy Myers characters as Thanksgiving dishes and sort of compared each one. And 
I put it up Thanksgiving morning and I tagged her in the comment. I think I said something to the effect of, you know, so thankful for Nancy Myers and all the great entertainment and all the great films she's brought us over the years. And, you know, I thought, I just hope she sees it. Um, but she ended up seeing it and reposting it. And it was, I couldn't believe it. I mean, she's such a hero to me. So the fact that she knows I exist is, you know, pretty amazing. <laughs> Living in Newport Beach is amazing. It's a really laid back beach community, I would say. And I feel like it has a lot of the comforts of LA in the sense of from moving down from LA there, um, there's a lot of the same restaurants, which is great, but I love it because the lifestyle is so serene and relaxing. I am outside all the time. I am walking to Lido Village to get coffee. Um, it's really, really beautiful and it's a great place to live. Okay, and now for the crown jewel of the apartment, this is the deck. So this has a really beautiful view of a waterway here. There's always boats coming to and fro. It's low tide right now, but I created this sort of cozy outdoor setup these benches are built in and sometimes this is a lounge space. This is how I would set it up for an outdoor dinner party in the summer. I kind of want it to feel coastal, but also a little bit like a French garden. So I picked up these iron chairs at a consignment store. I love these. I feel like they feel very kind of French English garden. Um, also lots of olive trees and lots of florals to kind of warm it up and make it feel not so stark. So I love having a little bit of lush greenery. Um, and then my little umbrellas, which I love. So one thing you've probably noticed already from the rest of my apartment is I have flowers everywhere. Um, one thing I love doing is flower arranging. I'm by no means a professional, but it's definitely a very relaxing kind of meditative thing that I do. So this arrangement I made, I put a little net over the top of this little silver vessel and then just kind of arranged different um, supermarket greens to create this beautiful centerpiece. My mom actually used to be a florist and a wedding planner, so I am not, but I've learned from the best. <laughs> I stuck with kind of a pinky purple spring color palette. And I think the key is to space them out properly, but also don't try to be too perfect. Just kind of add where, where you see space. I like to squint my eyes from far away and look at the arrangement. And if it feels like it's missing something, then I'll add something. But I think sometimes people get really intimidated by doing stuff like this, but there really is no wrong way to do it. So this is a little olive tree freshly planted for spring. And I love having olive trees out here because they love the sun and this deck gets a lot of sun. So I do have to water these um, a couple times a week, but they're pretty hardy and they hold up pretty well under the really intense California sun. <laughs> Even though I live in a tiny apartment, I love having this space because it allows me to do what I love, which is entertain. I love having dinner parties out here with my girlfriends in the summer. I love to throw like a little themed thing. Sometimes it's Italian, sometimes it's like a little sushi thing. Sometimes I love to just pick up wood fire pizzas and salads and just eat out here, but it really is so nice because it really extends that space and it's an entertainer's dream. So it's gonna be very hard to leave this place. I don't know if I ever will be able to, but the one thing that this place does not have is a bathtub. If it had a bathtub, I would literally never leave. I don't know how you would get me out of here, but I'm really looking forward to that in my next space. What I love most about my space is that I've really made it my own and it's become this passion project that I continue to renovate, um, reimagine, and also share with other people, which has been amazing connecting with so many people from all over. To me, home means your sanctuary, your safe place, the place you go at the end of the day to relax, unwind, and it's a place that should truly reflect you. And I think that's why I love my house so much as it really reflects my aesthetic, my taste and my lifestyle and personality. Thanks for watching. For more home worthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.